touch me. You're trying to make a fool out of me. See, there's a lot of competition around here. So whenever a new girl shows up, you kind of give her merchandise the once over. All you wanted to do was to get me in bed with you. Hey, Gene, what was all the fireworks about? You have it all cut and dried, huh? I mean, you already have it convicted. We found a handgun at the scene. I think I can get you off in manslaughter. Mr. Petrocelli, I didn't kill him. Then who did, lady? Who did? <laughs> Backfire. Oh, it was probably just a television. <laughs> hey, Gene! What was all the fireworks about? Hey, Gene! Wonder what's eating her. Who knows? Come on, let's go see if Al would like a drink. Hey, Al, how about a drink? Keep the girls back, Harry. And you better get the cops. Hello. Mama. Mama, come and start. Yeah, molto bene, molto bene. Mama, 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 I don't have a cold, no. Well, it doesn't sound funny to me. Forget it, will you How's Papa? Good. The girls? Good. Yeah, yeah, Maggie's fine. Yeah, yeah cooking is terrific, Mama. Cooking is terrific. When? A oh, mama, that's wonderful. Hey, Maggie. What? Guess what? What? Mama's coming out here. She's gonna, yeah, really? she's gonna visit us. When? Uh, mama, mama, of course she's gonna. Mama, she'd love to see you. Are you kidding? Tell mama you want to come. Hold on, mama. Mama, that's terrific. Of course we want you to come. When? Friday. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, here's Tony. We'll see you then. Hello, Mama. Mama, terrific. Listen to me. You find out what flights you're arriving on, let me get all... Yeah, give me the details. I'll take care of everything, okay? Okay, give my love to everybody, Mama. Mama, si benedica. You know something? I can't believe it. She's really coming. She's really coming. She is. Hey, Meg, where are you going? Shopping. Shopping for what? Towel sheets, bedspreads, the things. Tony, and then I have to start cleaning. There is not going to be one speck of dust in that place when Mama gets here. <laughs> Mr. Petricelli? Yeah, in here. Uh... My name's Daniels. Uh, do you have a minute? What can I do for you, Mr. Daniels? Well, it's, uh... Well, it's not exactly for me. Uh, although, I don't know, maybe on the other hand it is. Well, why don't you sit down and, um, relax and talk, huh? Thank you. Uh, you see, there's this, uh, there's this girl that works for me, uh, Jean Carter. Mm -hmm. Um, did you happen to read the paper this morning, you know, about the shooting ahead of the Desert Dunes last night? 
Yeah, I, re I read about it. I didn't pay too much attention to it, though. Uh, well, neither did I, Mr. Petricelli, but uh, I got a call from this Jean, and it seems they've arrested her for shooting this guy. So I thought, well, maybe I ought to get a lawyer for her. I have to ask you this, but uh, who's going to put me on the payroll? Well, I know she hasn't got much money, so I guess I am. Uh, unless it costs too much. Depends on what I have to do. I want to ask you something else. And, uh, look, I, I hope you understand this. But is there anything going on between you and this girl? No, it's as I said. She's, she's a nice girl now. I've got a couple of dollars. I'd like to help her. Will you see her? Yeah, I'll see her. And, uh... It probably won't be too expensive. Mr. Petroselli? It's, uh, it's pronounced Richard Shelley. Oh. Uh, Mr. Daniels asked me to come to see you. Oh, he's a wonderful man. No, he seems to feel the same way about you. Yeah, why don't you sit down? Mr. Petrocelli, I don't understand what's going on. What is it you don't understand? Why I've been arrested. Well, the police think that you killed a man named Ellen Bell. It's so confusing. I wasn't anywhere near there when they said it happened. Well, did you, did you know him? Yes, of course I did. We went out a couple of times. Nothing serious. We just went out. <sighs> there's, there's something screwy here, Miss Carter. Now, according to the police report, there were a group of people not 30 feet from the apartment where Bell was shot. Now, they claimed, number one, they heard an argument, then they heard a shot, then they saw you come running out. Now, these weren't just passerbys. I mean, these people claimed that they had met you several times before. Well, I had met them at Allen's. Yeah, but they swear it was you. Now, you tell me you weren't even near there. I was there, but earlier. <sighs> Look, you better start right from the beginning and tell me what happened from minute one until now. All right? All right. I guess it all started in the afternoon, after work. Al picked me up around six. We had a date for dinner that evening, but he wanted to go back to his apartment to get something before we went out. I bet you could use a drink. Sure you could. It's been a long day. You look fine to me, baby. Oh, thank you very much. Get the ice. Listen, I thought we were going out to dinner. Yeah, well, I made late reservations. I figured we'd hang around here. He said something about late reservations and why didn't we have a drink, so we did. And I uh, reserved your favorite table over the view. Uh, not too much, you know. I know. And a little water. Mm -hmm. A little water, it's done. Oh, good. You look fantastic. Oh, thanks. I don't know what it was, but he seemed different that night. He'd always been a perfect gentleman, never pressuring me. Perhaps he'd been drinking earlier. He just kept after me. I told him I wanted to go home, but when I tried to leave, he tore my dress. I'm afraid I lost my temper and hit him. He never acted this way before, and I just wanted to get away from him. I was frightened. I didn't know what he'd do next, so I grabbed my purse and ran. Now, about what time was this? I suppose seven or so. Now, according to the witnesses, they heard the shot, but found the body at 10.15. That's what I told you. It was long after I'd gone. Okay. Okay, now, what'd you do after you left? Taxi! I really didn't know what to do. But when I arrived out front, a cab was there, and I took it and went home. I was really disturbed by what happened. I thought if I took a bath, it would calm me down. But to make sure, I also took a sleeping pill. I guess I just dozed off when the police arrived and arrested me for killing Al. I still can't believe it. Well, that's it. That's the whole story. That's all I know. I gotta tell you, there's, uh, there's something very strange here. Hey, Counselor! Hold up! 
How are you, Tony? Inquiring about my health? Well, I hope you're feeling up to snuff. I understand you're going to defend the Carter girl. Yeah, I might. Well, in case, we're going to be locking horns again. A little disappointing, however. Disappointing? Well, Tony, you know how you always manage to bring out the best in me. Thanks. I'm afraid we just don't have a case worthy of our talents this time. You have it all cut and dried, huh? I mean, you already have a convicted. Well, I'm not counting my chickens, if that's what you mean. But after all, Tony, this girl was seen by at least half a dozen eyewitnesses coming out of a room that had no back door. It was only alibi is to deny that she was there. Now, that's hardly proof of innocence. Well, it's not exactly proof of guilt, which is what it's going to take to get her convicted. Well, we have that, I believe. Better than eyewitnesses? Oh, yes. Well, I see the young lady hasn't told you everything. We found a handgun at the scene. Ballistics determined it was the murder weapon. Just happened to be registered to a Miss Jean Carter. Your client, Tony. See in court. Yeah, that's where I do my business. said something about not being able to find the right bedspread. Oh. Oh. Police report? Yeah, it's all there, all the names and facts. You know, from where I sit, Tony, I think you've really got a loser. But your confidence is underwhelming. Facts is facts, Tony. Here's some more facts for you. The lady claimed she took a cab, took her from the dunes to her apartment that night at 7. You want me to find a driver? Bingo. And one more thing. Find out everything you can about the victim and Jean Carter. You want me to do anything else? I mean, if I have a spare time. Yeah, help Maggie find a bedspread. <laughs> yeah, Anthony J. Petricelli, attorney at law. Mama! Yeah. No, 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 Mama. No, no, she's not sick. She's just out shopping. Uh, as a matter of fact, she just came in. I will. <laughs> Mama sends her love to you. Hello, Mama. Maggie sends her love to you, too. What? You're arriving on the 5 o'clock flight Friday? Fantastic! OK. You just be there, and we'll be there to pick you up. OK, Mama. Give our love to everybody, huh? Bye, Mama. Hey, like this? See what? Oh, no. They didn't. Didn't what? Well, they've given me the wrong colors. <laughs> but what's the difference? Mama's colorblind anyway. Oh. Was Al a good friend of yours? I only moved in about four weeks ago, which is when I met Al. He was very friendly. Helped me move in. Did you ever see him with any other girls? Mm, once in a while, but mostly with her, Jean. Are you sure it was her that night? Of course I'm sure. What do you think? Well, I think that it's possible that if you're having a few drinks at night, you, uh, you could make a mistake. Look, mister, I'm sorry, what did you say your name was? Petricelli. Right. Well, anyway, like I was saying, you live in a place like this, it's kind of everybody for themselves, you know what I mean? Well, not exactly. Uh, clue me. Well, see, there's a lot of competition around here. So whenever a new girl shows up, you kind of give her merchandise the once over. Is that what you did with Jean? Yeah. She really wasn't all that much. But anyway, that's why I'm so sure it was her. Well, Shirley, thanks for your help, and uh, thanks for your lesson in merchandising. Hey, you know you don't have to rush off. You're really kind of cute. Look, Jean, I want to help you, but I need a lot more than I've got now. Don't you think I'd like to help you, Mr. Petricelli? I know it's a weak story, but it's the truth. 
What about the gun? Well, if they say it's mine, then it must be. Well, how did you happen to have it in the first place? My boss, Mr. Daniels, gave it to me. He knew I lived alone. He was worried. I've always been frightened of guns, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I took it, put it in the drawer. Okay, when was the last time you saw the gun? I suppose when I first put it in the drawer. I'd forgotten all about it. Now, was there anybody that came to your apartment that knew about it, that might have taken it? I don't think so. Al was there once or twice for dinner. So it's possible one of those times he might have taken the gun. But why? Well, I don't know, but I do know the gun was found in his apartment. I mean, it didn't get there by itself. Someone had to carry it there. If it wasn't him and it wasn't you, then who was it? I don't know. I don't know. Mr. Petrocelli, I didn't kill him. <sighs> We've got to make a jury believe that. What kind of budget do you think we're working on? <laughs> no, no, come on, Tony. This is Mr. Peterson. He's the one who picked up the client. Oh, Mr. Peterson, how are you? My name is Anthony Petrocelli. I'm a lawyer for the lady who claims you picked her up that night. Well, how can I help you? Now, you picked her up at the Desert Dunes and dropped her off at her apartment, right? Yeah, that's right. 7.05 p.m. and dropped her off at 18424 Oracle Avenue at 720. Do you remember anything unusual about her? Well, she was very quiet, kind of moody-like. You know, I saw that her blouse had been ripped open and I... I tried to cheer her up, but then she was quiet, so I just shut up and drove. Thanks. You know, I appreciate that. Did I help? Well, maybe. Pete, take care of Mr. Peterson. Oh, no. No, that's all right. Look, I was on my way home anyway. Fellas, sure. you bet. I'm afoot. You got to give me a ride back to my car. Yeah, sure. Not going too well, huh, Tony? Well, let's not plan any victory parties, Pete. Sir. What's the matter? Look, I have just finished hanging out the laundry, and if you get one spotted hurt on it, I'll kill you. Oh, wow. Uh, I see. <laughs> I see. We spent 15 payments for a dryer, and you use a clothesline, huh? Well, they just smell fresher. Listen, you know, it's only Mama. It's not the Queen of England. I'd feel better if it was the Queen of England. You've been working pretty hard, haven't you? Huh? Yeah. But I, uh, I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> Listen, honey, you know, you're really not... You're really not nervous because Mama's coming, are you? Yeah. Look, I want her to see it. This is our home. I'm proud of it. This is now official Petrocelli territory. You know something? What? If I weren't married, I'd ask you. You know what? If I wasn't married, I'd say yes. Yeah, hello. Oh, Foxy. Yeah, how are you? Foxy, I... No, I'm on my lunch hour now. For... But can it wait? Oh, okay, I'll be over there in 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh... Make that a half an hour, will you, Foxy? Yeah. Bye. Said half 
an hour, Tony. I just couldn't wait any longer. Sorry, Foxy, but you know, the traffic's getting heavier all the time. Well, how is Maggie these days? Fine, fine. Enough of the domestic front, though. Why the hotline call? Look, Tony, I know how you feel about your clients. The law says they're innocent until proven guilty. That's the way you defend them, and I admire that. And I admire you for always giving it your best. Well, now that you got me blushing, uh, are we back to Gene Carter? We are indeed. Look, Tony, I just have to tell you, this is one even you can't beat. There's no way out of the evidence. Look, she said that she wasn't there. Did you ever consider she might have come back later? We talked to the cab driver, too. Let me tell you a few of the things we just learned. We know that he picked her up at work later that day. We also know they went back to his apartment. You sure kept me waiting long enough this afternoon. Yeah, well, I had a little business deal to take care of. Listen, why don't we not go out tonight and just stay home, huh? Listen, we gotta have a talk. Doc? But that night was different than it had been. She was happy with the way things had been going. But Belle wasn't. We're not gonna see each other anymore. What do you mean we're not gonna see each other anymore? I could just wait in. So you like it. Well, I don't. I'm tired of you. You're dull, baby. He told her he wanted to end their affair. But she wasn't willing to stand still for that. I want out. Look, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Don't touch me. And when me. he accidentally tore her blouse, her temper done? went with it. She'd come expecting a quiet, romantic evening. But that was all changed. She ran out, hurt, bewildered. She got the cab all right, and he dropped her off at home, just as she said. She was at a loss. She didn't quite realize what had happened. She'd been rejected and couldn't understand why. Her frustration turned into rage. She didn't want to give him up that easily, but she didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, that's all very interesting. Do you have anything to back it up? Friends of Al's we talked to. He told them he was having lady trouble. Even Mr. Daniels, her boss, he said that she was very possessive about Al. Well, maybe. Now, perhaps she tried to call Al, trying to change his mind. According to the phone company, his line was out of order that night. Well, that was too much for her. The longer she waited, the worse it got. Finally, she couldn't take it any longer. She came out, got in her car, drove away, which is when her landlord saw her, which he told us. She went back to the dunes to have it out with Al. And they had a Lulu. Al? All right, all right. So what's a big deal? Huh? It just didn't work out. It didn't work out because you wanted me to be something I wasn't. You better believe you're not. So why did you keep asking me out all the time? Because I thought sooner or later you'd change. Hey, they're not really going at it in here. For the last time, get it through your head. Through. Done. Finished. Now get the hell out of here. She listened to him tell her it was all over. It was just too much for her. She shot him. Premeditated? Well, I don't know. Then she left. I don't think she even realized what she was doing. And, as you know, hey, we've Jean. got eyewitnesses from the pool area who saw her leave. She went back home, changed her clothes, got in bed and waited for the police. No, I don't know, Foxy. I. I... I don't have anything better, but I've just got a feeling. Look, Tony, what I'm trying to tell you is that maybe this doesn't all add up to murder one. You really don't have to push it. At least talk to her before the trial. Tony, cop a plea. It could be the best way. Yeah, I'll talk to her. I'll make her the offer. Sorry, Tony, I know how you feel. But it's all there. Oh, I've got to run. Oh, by the way, your client asked for some things from her apartment. Uh, did you get them on the way? Yeah, sure. Yeah, here are, uh, here are keys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a list of the things she wants. Call me, huh? Yeah, I will. Thanks, Haskell.
Jean? <laughs> Hardly. I'm Ellen. Ellen Carter. Jean's sister. You're Jean's sister? Younger sister. By about five minutes. It's funny, you see. I, uh... I didn't know she had a sister. Would I lie to you about a thing like that? I see you have the key. Does that mean Jeannie's growing up some? <sighs> have you known Jeannie long? Yeah, a couple of days. Oh. She is growing up so. You, uh, you don't, you don't live in San Remo. Not anymore. Got a little small for me here. I travel around here and there. Uh, now, you just got back? Just a few minutes ago. Does Jean know? Didn't she tell you? Oh, no. No, she wouldn't tell you. You do have a name, don't you? Yeah, my name's Petrocelli. Anthony Petrocelli. Anthony, how formal. Well, you can call me Tony. All right, Tony. Listen, if you're expecting Jean, I can make myself scarce. No, no, she won't be back today. She won't? Why not? She's in jail. I'm her lawyer. In jail? You're kidding. What has she done? She's accused of killing a man named Ellen Bell. <sighs> I think I need a drink. <sighs> okay, come on. I'll get you out of here. I didn't even know she'd been seeing now. How long since you'd seen her? Six, seven months. We didn't have anything serious going. It's funny. I just didn't think he was her kind. Why yours and not hers? You don't miss a beat, do you? Jean and I look alike, but that's where it ends. I go one way, she goes the other. I hit and run. She, well, she's just not a player. He was, that's all. He wouldn't be the first man that was curious about twins. And curiosity killed the cat. It's not one of the smartest things I've ever said. Well, not exactly, no. How deep is she in? Maybe 30 years to life. Can you get her off? Depends on you. Why me? Jean's only defense is that she wasn't there when it happened. And? And we've got six eyewitnesses with 20-20 vision that put her on the scene. Look, I love my sister, but I wasn't anywhere near San Remo. Are you saying she was there? I'm not saying she was or she wasn't. I'm just saying that I wasn't. Okay, that's fair enough. Where were you last night? I was on the road on my way here. Did you stay anywhere? I drove straight through. You didn't sleep? Maybe about 3 o'clock. I got a little tired and pulled over the side of the road. I slept for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And before that? Look, about a week ago, Jean called me. I was in Chicago. She asked me if I wanted to come out for a while. Okay, Chicago was a little dull. So I said I would. The last few days, I've been driving. Alone? Most of the time. Can you prove any of this? Do I have to? You might. I stayed mostly in motels. I don't remember their names. Who remembers the names of motels? You better try. Let me tell you something. The clincher for the prosecution are the eyewitnesses. Now, if I thought you were Jean, imagine what they're going to think. I think they'll be confused as hell. Thank you for the drink, Mr. Petricelli, and all the fun conversation. I guess I'd better remember the names of those motels. Because it looks like you think one of us is lying. And people have a habit of believing Jean. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Petricelli. Oh, thank you. I didn't realize how much I missed these little things. I just saw Ellen. Why didn't you tell me about her? How is she? Is she all right? Obviously, she's a lot better off than you are. Now, why didn't you tell me? I don't know. I didn't think it was important. Oh. Did it ever occur to you that all those people that said they saw you might have seen Ellen? 
Well, no, I just thought it was some terrible mistake. When did she get here? Why didn't she come to see me? I told her that I wanted to talk to you first. She'll be here tomorrow. When was the last time you saw her? Oh, she left three months ago. Uh -huh. Did you live together? No, she had her own apartment. Did she have a key to your place? Yes. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Did you see that gun again after she left? No, I don't believe so. Do I understand you correctly? Oh, I think you do. It's just possible that she took your gun when she left. It's also possible that she came back last night. She found out about her old boyfriend and you, got ticked off about him fooling around with you, went over there and killed him. I don't believe that. I don't believe she killed him. Then who did, lady? Who did? It all checks out with what I got. Bell was playing around with his sister first. She left town. Pretty soon he's after the other one. What about Jean? Very quiet. Lived in the sister's shadow, dated now and again. That's why I can't figure why she'd start going out with one of her sister's discards, and especially a guy like Bell. Maybe to prove she was just as much a woman as her sister. Sometimes there's a lot of competition between sisters. Look, all this still doesn't help anything. Hello? Who? It's a lady. She'd like to speak to Tony. Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Carter. Uh, you found out the names of all the motels. Uh-huh. I see. Just a second. Yeah, well, with a name like that, I'd stay there myself. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. I, I don't need any more information right now. That won't help. Look, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. I know. Give me the name, I'll start checking. Well, not quite. You see, she was Mrs. John Smith those nights. And she and Mr. Smith parted company 500 miles from San Remo. Oh. State your name and occupation, please. Roger Martin, Sergeant, San Remo Police. Please be seated. Sergeant. Were you the investigating officer on the night of the murder? I was. You recognize this weapon, Sergeant? I do. That's my identification tag on it. Was this the weapon found at the scene of the murder? It is. And uh, is this the gun with which Alan Bell was shot? It is. Ballistics test firing proved the bullet came from that gun. To whom is this gun registered, Sergeant? To the defendant, Gene Carter. Thank you, Sergeant. Cross? Sergeant? The gun was found uh, in the room of the decedent. It was? Mm -hmm. That was the defendant's gun. That's right. Did you see her shoot him? No, of course not. Did any of the witnesses that you spoke to see her shoot him? No, but... Uh, what about the fingerprints on the gun? There were no clear prints, several partials. But not enough for identification? No, sir. Sergeant, does it seem likely to you that the defendant would shoot Alan Bell, take the time to wipe the fingerprints off the gun, leave it in the room, and then take off? I don't know. That's right, Sergeant. You don't know. No further questions. Redirect, Mr. Fox. Sergeant, just one question. Unlikely though it is, the defendant could have wiped the gun off, thrown it on the floor before she fled. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. The witness uh, may step down. Should you have let him get off like that? I took it as far as I could. The people call Shirley Snyder. Are you a resident of the Desert Dunes Apartments? Yes, I am. 
Were you present outside Mr. Bell's apartment on the night of the shooting? Sure was. Can you tell us what you saw? Yes, sir. I was out there with some friends, and we heard this commotion in Al's apartment, and then a shot. And then she came running out and right past us. May the record show she identified the defendant? Thank you, Miss Knight. Cross. Miss Snyder. Hi. I'd like to recap, if I may, okay? Now, you heard an argument, and you heard a shot, and the defendant ran right past you. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, you had met the defendant before, so you know who she was. I sure did. Now, as the defendant ran past you, did you try to speak to her? Sure, but she just kept right on going. I see. Now, I want to ask you one more question, and I want you to remember that the defendant's life may depend on your answer. Is it possible that you could have made a mistake? Is it possible that it was not the defendant that you saw? No, sir. It was her. Are you absolutely certain? I sure am. Snyder, I'm going to ask you again. Are you sure it was the defendant that you saw? I don't know. Um, the other one. Maybe she. They both look the same. The other one's dressed like her. I don't know. I don't know which one. No further questions. That was the last witness for the people, Your Honor. You may step down, Miss Snyder. Mr. Petricelli, are you ready for the defense? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Now, you've all heard the evidence put forth by the prosecution. And much of it, as you've seen, is no longer valid. If I may, I would like to take the same evidence If it, uh, if it please the court, I would like to take a ten-minute recess to consult with my client uh, before I proceed. You really are something. You almost pulled it off. Pulled what off, Mr. Petricelli? It was you. Really? Really. You almost had me ready to put your sister's head in the chopping block. And just what do you intend to do about it? I do know a little about law, Mr. Petricelli. And I know you can do nothing prejudicial to my defense. You must give your best effort. No, not anymore. You see, I can go three ways now. Oh? Yeah. I can change the plea to guilty, go for a lesser sentence. I don't think I like that. I can withdraw as your lawyer, and that would mean a new trial. At which time I'm sure I'd be acquitted, since you can't testify. Or I can go on with the trial, and I can get you off. I like that. Let me tell you something. If I get you off, I'm going to put Ellen in a hole so deep she'll never get out of it. I have that all worked out. Oh, yeah? How? When I'm acquitted, if they arrest Ellen, I simply come forward and confess to the crime. They can't try me twice. Double jeopardy. You really have it worked out, haven't you? Huh? No, there's one flaw, you see. 
If you confess, who do you think is going to believe you? We'll prove it wasn't you. And they'll say for sure that you're confessing to save Ellen. She'll be left holding the bag. <sighs> Look, Jean. Jean, I think I really know what happened that night. Now, let me talk to the prosecutor and the judge. I think I can get you off in manslaughter. Ellen came here and put her life on the line to be identified, to help you. Gene, if they go after her, it's murder one. Do you think you could live with that? Now, you were right, Haskell, about the first part of the night anyway. He was getting tired of Gene. And, see, he wasn't the kind of guy that stayed with one woman too long. We're not going to see each other anymore. What do you mean we're not going to see each other anymore? I could just wait in. So you like it. Well, I don't. I'm tired of it. You're dull, baby. He told her they were through. He wanted to break things off. Not to me, we don't. I want out. Look, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Don't touch me. Look what you've done. A torn dress and a torn relationship. That was a lot to handle for one night. So she went home hurt. She really cared for him. And now, without warning, it was over. Jean decided to change clothes and go out. She wasn't sure where. But she had to get her mind off things. Maybe a drink would help. Al had meant a lot to her, and suddenly he was out of her life. She knew she'd lost him, but didn't know what to do about it. And then it came to her. If she couldn't have him as herself, perhaps as Ellen, her twin. Men had always gone for Ellen, and when she and Jean competed, Ellen had always won. So it was as Ellen she went to see him. I got pretty dull where I was, so I thought I'd come back here and see what was going on. Well, I'll tell you, it was pretty dull here without you. Oh, don't tell me that you were just sitting around doing nothing. You want to hear something funny? Always. I've been dating your sister. You're kidding, Jane? <laughs> Oh, what could you possibly have seen in her? Well, you know, I thought she might be like you, but sure don't run in the family. Oh, didn't you like her? Like her? I got so I couldn't stand her. She went there intending to carry off the charade, but she couldn't. You pig. She finally told what him the truth. All you wanted to do was to get me in bed with you. What kind of game are you playing? Don't touch me! You're trying to make a fool out of me. <laughs> Didn't know what to do. But then she saw herself in the mirror, and she found the answer. She'd come as Ellen. That's how she'd leave. She knew Ellen was arriving and counted upon the confusion to get them both off. So she smudged the fingerprints on the gun and left. The important thing to remember is that the murder itself and Jean Carter's subsequent actions were committed spontaneously and in panic. There was no premeditation. With Mr. Fox's concurrence, I'd like to change the plea to guilty of a lesser charge. People would agree. Then it's agreed. Let's go back into court and put it on the record and dismiss the jury. Sentencing will be one week from today. Thank you, gentlemen. Send in the matron. I guess you were right, Mr. Petrocelli. I'll be in to see you tomorrow. Thank you.
Thanks, Helen. Well, Tony, nice job. You too, Foxy. Shall we call it a draw? Double or nothing next time, huh? Hey, you're on. Oh, I think I'm finally ready for the big day. Yeah? You've got 12 hours and 15 minutes before she gets you. It's a lot of work, but I think it was worth it. Oh, you were terrific, honey. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, that's Pete. Oh, don't get it. Oh, Hello? Mama! How are you, darling? Huh? It's... You can't come. Oh, Mama, that's... That's very... Oh, of course we're disappointed. Yes, Maggie's disappointed, too. She's been working very hard. Okay, Mama. And take care of Aunt Rosa, will you? And Mama, Sabanadika. Wrong number. Wrong number? All right, come on.